There are three ways that I propagate a ZZ plant, and I'm gonna explain how easily and successfully you can do it too. Stay with me until the end. The last method will 99.9% .9 guarantee you get a successful take on your propagation. And as a bonus, I'll show you how I water my ZZ plants so they never die. Okay, so the first method we're going over is leaf propagation. This method's easy, and the benefit of using it is that it allows me to create a bunch of tiny little plants without having to sacrifice the mother plant too much. Now with this method, I can either propagate the leaves in water or soil. It works great both ways and I'll show you how to do both. So let's start by looking at our plant and taking leaves from an area on the mother plant that the removal of the leaves will not make our mother plant look lopsided or bare. Taking a leaf from the bottom of each stem can help us do this. I start by disinfecting my pruners and removing the leaves this way. Tearing them would work, but I won't get a nice clean cut. Now that we have our leaves, let me show you how to propagate them in water. I start by taking a bowl and filling it with water. Now get a piece of styrofoam and some scissors and trim the styrofoam so that it can sit inside the bowl. Once you have that, take your scissors and create a notch for each leaf, evenly spaced all around the side of the styrofoam. Then take each leaf and slide it into the notch with the bottom of the leaf facing down, making sure that the leaf sits below the bottom of the styrofoam so that it can be submerged in the water. Then just put the styrofoam with the leaves in the water and wait for the roots to start to appear. It's really that easy. Now let me show you how easy it is to propagate the leaves in soil. So we start by preparing our mix by taking a mixture of one part peat, one part core, and one part perlite. Then mixing them together so we get a nice mix like this. Now let's get a small pot and fill it with the soil. Make sure to slightly compact the soil so the leaf doesn't wobble around and the soil makes contact with the leaf. Grab a wooden dowel, carve out a small trench in the soil, and place one leaf inside each of these small trenches, slightly compacting the soil around each leaf. Try to space your leaves apart so that when they start to emerge, we'll have a bunch of small plants evenly spaced that can grow rhizomes and grow into a beautiful plant. Once at this point, I water the soil with just enough water to wet the bottom of the leaf and water them again when this area becomes dry. This will prevent us from overwatering them at this point. Once I've watered them, I place my plants under medium to bright indirect light so they start to thrive. Now using this method, it'll take a while to have a full mature plant, but don't let that discourage you. Your efforts will be well worth it, and in the end, I guarantee you, you'll enjoy the process. So now the next method that I use to successfully propagate my ZZ plants is to use cuttings. With this method, the benefit I get is that I have a little bit of a head start when compared to propagation by leaf. And the disadvantage is that I'll need to take more from the mother plant. For this method as well, we'll need pruners that have been sanitized. I like to start by looking for a cutting that has about three to four sets of leaves. Although you can do smaller cuttings if you choose, you just lose a little bit of the head start you have. Once removed from the mother plant, I remove the bottom set of leaves from my cutting and make a 45 degree angle cut a little below the bottom node. So now to propagate our cutting in water, grab a glass or plastic container. I prefer one with a small opening to help prevent the cutting from falling in and fill it with room temperature water. On a side note, I often get asked the question if it's okay to use tap water for water propagation, and in most cases, yes it is. With the exception of some of the more finicky plants like calathea and spider plants, I use tap water with most of my water propagations. So let's get back to our propagation. Take your cutting and place it in the water. Make sure that the node is submerged in the water, and I like to change my water every four to seven days. After several weeks, you'll start to see tiny roots emerge and continue to grow. This part is actually very cool to watch, so enjoy it. Now, if you prefer to propagate your cutting in soil, then just get a small pot, fill it with the same mix we use for the leaf propagation, add a little rooting hormone to the tip of your cutting, and plant it in the soil with the node submerged. Whether you choose to propagate in soil or water, place it in an area where your plant can receive medium to bright indirect light and wait for roots to appear. Two weeks after I start to see roots appear, I'll start to fertilize my cuttings by taking a general purpose houseplant fertilizer at half rate and fertilizing them about every two weeks. If you decide to propagate in water, once the roots are about one to two inches in length, take the cutting and transplant it into soil. Water heavy for the first two weeks after transplant and slowly back off the water after that. This will help the plant slowly acclimate from water to soil. Okay, so now let's take a look at propagation by division. This method will allow you to start with the largest plant that you could possibly get when compared to the leaf or stem propagation method and give the highest probability of a successful take. But it does require that you have a very large full plant or one that you're willing to break down considerably. 
For this method, I like to start by determining which segment of the plant I'm going to take as my new plant. Once I've decided, I remove the pot and slowly start to remove the soil from that area to uncover the entire rhizome of the plant and prevent injuring any portion of the mother plant and the new division. Take your time during this part of it to try to cause the least amount of stress to the plant. Once it's separated, we'll look for pot that's just a little bigger than the rhizome. Remember, ZZ plants like to be snug and stay on the dry side, so using a smaller pot will help us to accomplish that. For this soil mix, I use a mix with two parts core, one part perlite, and one part smaller pine bark. I'm looking for a slightly drier mix since my plant's a little more established. I then fill the pot with a small amount of soil, just enough so that my division will sit in the pot at the same level in the soil that it was in the previous pot. Make sure the plant is centered, fill with soil all around, slightly compact the soil, water it thoroughly, and place it under medium to bright indirect light. Now, the trick to keeping your ZZ plants healthy and thriving, and the number one reason plant parents kill them, is overwatering. To water this new division, and even your more established ZZ plants, water them thoroughly either by top or bottom watering them, and then allow the soil to dry out completely before watering them again. Don't be afraid to let them go dry a little longer, they'll thank you for it. Now that you're a pro at propagating ZZ plants, watch this video next so you can learn how to propagate snake plants.